When someone says database, most people have a specific image in mind, usually their favorite relational database management system of choice. But database just means an organized collection of data, and there are many different approaches to accomplish that, each with their own pros and cons. Relational databases have been the most dominant form of data storage for decades and include the most common platforms such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, and SQL Server. As the names cleverly indicate, they're all based on structure queried language or SQL to interact with the data. The data is stored in tables made up of columns and rows, and tables have relationships between them based on the unique primary key in one table being a foreign key in another table. Transactions are designed to be ACID, meaning atomicity, consistency, isolation, and durability. Atomicity is when each transaction is a single unit, it either all succeeds or fails, preventing partial changes to data. Consistency ensures each transaction follows the defined rules and doesn't end up in an illegal state. Isolation is when each transaction operates independent of other transactions, even when executed concurrently. And durability refers to when a transaction is committed, it stays committed until success or failure and can't be interrupted. The ACID concept ensures a high level of data integrity within the database. Rising in popularity are what are collectively called NoSQL databases. This is an umbrella term for a number of database structures that use programming languages other than SQL to interact with the data. With the rise of unstructured or less structured data, these options help since relational databases require a defined data structure. The most simple form of this is the key value database, such as Redis. In a key value database, all the data is stored in memory with each value being defined with a key. Looking up that key will return the value. The strengths are extremely fast speed since all the data is in memory and does not have to be read from disk. And it's flexible since the value stored can be any kind of data type, including lists within lists. This is great for quick and simple data lookups, but may not be able to handle more complex data structures and data integrity may not be reliable. In a document database such as MongoDB, the database is made up of collections, and each collection contains multiple documents. A document can be exactly what you think, like a PDF or Word doc, but more commonly it's a JSON or XML file, essentially creating key value lookups in each document. You can query through documents to find related values. There's a lot of flexibility since each document can have a different structure, and adding new data is as easy as loading in a new file. Writing new data is very quick, but there's little consistency and no ability to join between documents, making any advanced querying very difficult. The next step from a document database is being able to quickly search through all the documents. This would be a search engine database like Elasticsearch. All the values within the document are indexed, and when the search query is made, it returns the highest probability match from all the documents. This is very powerful for use in search engines and natural language processing. Another variation on the key value structure is the time series database, such as InfluxDB. In these, the focus is change in data over time, so a date time is built into the key value. Records are rarely altered or deleted, and the focus is appending new data in sequence. This is useful in the IoT world, where telemetry data is constantly streamed, such as a power grid that records usage every minute. The graph database is quickly becoming popular in cases where there are many interconnected relationships, requiring queries with lots of joins. The graph is made up of nodes, an entity such as a person, and edges, which are the relationships between nodes. There is a focus on the importance of the relationship between nodes, and there are explicit labels for these relationships, as opposed to a relational database where we know the tables are connected, but the relationship between them isn't explicitly defined. Queries against graph databases are focused on relationships and can quickly find results for things like social networks, neural networks, and artificial intelligence. So which database do you use? The first question to ask is, is my data structured and in need of ACID level data integrity, such as financial transactions? If so, the tried and true relational database is probably where you want to look. If you have an app with small, simple set of data that needs quick results, a key value database might work for you. For most cases where you're working with unstructured data that isn't heavily relational, the document database is a good starting point. It has flexibility and good general purpose uses. If you're doing natural language processing or searching, then going with a search engine setup would be great. Or if you're gathering telemetry data on an IoT project, then time series is the way to go. And finally, if you're looking at heavily relational data, then the graph database might be the direction to head. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this video or learned something, a thumbs up would be really appreciated. Stick around for more data content by subscribing to the channel or clicking a video on screen. See you in the next one.